hi everyone welcome to my channel so this presentation is all about Nagios code and Nagios Excel. in this tutorial we will be going to cover every aspect every integration of Nagios Excel and the basics of Nagios code so let's get started before starting we will be going to cover few theories let's proceed so what we are going to cover here important ports to remember nagios code features of nagios why do we need nagios comparison between nagios code and nagios xi the nagios architecture active checks versus service checks and SNMP simple network management protocol in Nagios code we are going to see how to launch an AWS instance Nagios code installation plugging installation in Nagios code and how does a template look which we are going to cover in template configuration files in Nagios XI we are going to see installing Nagios XI, setting up email, setting up FTP server, it is Windows server, setting up FTP server on Linux machine, setting up AD authentication, setting up SNMP for Windows server, installing NCPA for Windows server, setting up NRPI on Linux server, Nagios XI scripts we are going to cover and we are also going to cover few recommended steps in Nagios XI. So what are the ports to remember? So we all know that HTTP service uses port 80, HTTPS 443, SNMP 161, port 161 is used to send a request, 162 is used to receive results, SHH secure shell 22. And what are the agents that we are going to use or what are the agents that are available that are going to use the ports? NCPA, Nagios Cross-Platform Agent, uses port 5693. NS Client uses port 12489. NRPE, Nagios Remote Plugin Executor, uses port 5666. NSCA, uses 5667. MS SQL uses 1433, MySQL uses 3306, Oracle DB 1521, and Postgre SQL 5432. So these are the some of the default ports that they are going to use, and for some of the case we also can change the port. So what is Nagios Code? Nagios Code is an open source monitoring tool which will monitor various type of system and networking devices. Features of Nagios, monitoring system, host resources, availability of plugins in all categories, we have plugins, ability to define network hierarchy, we can use parent and child concept in Nagios, we can send email, SMS notification when the host or service problem occurs and parallelized service checks. Why do we need Nagios? The important part. Detect all types of network or server issues helps you to find root cause of the problem, which allows you to get the permanent solution to all the fix. Active monitoring of the entire infrastructure and the business processes allows to monitor and troubleshoot server performance issue. We can check how is the disk performing, how is the CPU performing. We can set thresholds, warning and critical in for the CPU and disk. Helps us to plan infrastructure upgrade before outdated system creates failures. Helps to maintain security and availability of the devices. Automatically fix problems in a panic situation by the use of event handlers. Comparison. So we need to compare why we use Nagios Core and why do we use Nagios Excel. So first Nagios code, which is in completely open source, completely free. But for Nagios XI, 
we need to buy license and support license but we got some if we have got trial key we can use that or we can use a 60 days enterprise feature trial we can use that little hard to configure for beginners for nagio score because we need to define we need to create the templates and for nagios xi easy to configure simple web interface for nagio score ui interface little hard to walk through nice web interface nagio score no integrated graphics but we need to install pnp for nagios nagios xi uses inbuilt graphics nagio score it uses rrd database round robin database nagios xi it uses mysql and postgres sql Dashboard are the most valuable features in Nagios XI. In Nagios code implementation required little expertise, but Nagios XI with the help of web user interface, beginner can set up any host at any service very easily. Nagios code, there are no API support, but for Nagios XI, we have the API support and we are going to see that. Terminologies. So plugins, plugins with an external program that can consist of either a script or compiled executable. So what is a host, a device, a client, which you are going to monitor is a host. So what is a service? A service is nothing but a host can contains multiple service or metrics such as CPU usage, disk usage or any service or any process that you want to configure it as a service users users are nothing but who are going to use as the nagios xi contacts contacts can be anyone who are going to use nagios and we can group contact in the form of contact groups acknowledgements we can temporarily suppress alert notification downtime downtime whenever there is some kind of maintenance we can put the host in downtime so that we do not receive any alerts in some cases in some scenario what we used to do like suppose there is a medical store which we are monitoring the it infrastructure in nagios but during some time the store closure time the system goes down and it's from suppose 9 pm to 7 am in the morning but that's is a fixed downtime every day it happens it's not a genuine issue so what we do we put the device in fixed downtime from 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. so that we do not receive any alerts for that particular time period latency difference between scheduled to run and when it does actually run state soft and hard state to avoid false positive alerts what are agents? Agents are usually demons or service that are placed on the net, placed on the client to listen to connection from the coming from Nagio server. Host groups, a collection of hosts we can put in host groups. Suppose a Linux host group, a collection of Linux machine we can put into Linux host group. A collection of Windows machine we can put it into a Windows host group. Service group. Suppose we are monitoring some temperature and we can put we can put all those uh, services into one group that we called as service groups. So this is a simple diagrammatical represent or schematic representation of active versus passive checks. But this what we are seeing is an active check. Why it's an active check? Because the check is originated from the Nagio server. We are using a check command and there's some plugins which are executing and sending the result to the Nagio server. Active checks versus passive checks. Active checks initiated by Nagio server. Passive checks initiated by external application. Results submitted to scheduler for processing. Results stored in an external command file. This is host and service notification, some of the options like D for down, E for U for unreachable, R for recovery, F for flapping, S for scheduled host downtime and service we have similar uh, thing like W for warning, U for unknown, C for critical, R for recovery, S for scheduled downtime and F for flapping. And so this is the basic 
theory that we gonna cover in our first class from next day onwards we will go to the details on this nagios co as well as nagios xi in the upcoming session thank you